I mean, we thank you, we honor you, even at this particular time for our life, your mercy, your compassion, I be out for even allowing us to continue in the land of the living. For we know not, not all are fortunate enough to have that reality. So we thank you. Thank you for family. Huh. Both the physical and in the spiritual. Oh, I see what you did there. <clears throat> For both, I need it. Those who we can walk with. Uh, when it comes to this journey that you have with someone, Father, yeah. and even those who you have placed us with. So, uh, right now, Father, yeah, we pray for. Uh, our brother Adon Maurice Samat for his strength not only him Abiyah, but all of those who are in his mishpachah and all of those who knew his Abba we pray that he, his transition was peaceful and we pray that that peace Abiyah, transitions to Maurice Samat For no one can be ready for the loss of their Abba or Ima. But you allow him to see the signs. So may we all be there, Father Yah. May you give us the words to say. Or just give us the ability to hear and just to listen. For whatever that he may need, may we all be available. And may we all be capable. Well, we know that you, <clears throat> above all, give peace. You, above all, give comfort. You, above all, console. So, Toda Rabbah, we pray that you're consoling him right now. Let this lesson, Father, <clears throat> of this conversation be edifying to your body edifying to your children. And may we all hear and may these words fall on good ground that they may bear fruit in this season. So that we're by Father Yah. Bless you, Yahuwah. Bless the name of Yahuwah and bless him who comes in the name of Yahuwah. Shalom. So, Ms. Raka, um, gotta, we, um, <clears throat> what I would like to go in tonight, first and foremost, start off for coming out the gift. What I would like to go in tonight, uh, something that the, <clears throat> the family up, up here, the remnant, um, this portion, we went over last Shabbat during a conversational piece, which was, um, <clears throat> led by, uh, uh, Yosef, he went into the uh, topic of refuge. And um, he did a told job. And as we continue to, well, as I continue to look, the most I began to point things out to me uh, on this topic that I would kind of, you know, like to share with the family and see what y'all think. Uh, so the first place I want to go it's to the book of to the book of Deuteronomy. Um, I believe it's 30, 32 or 32. Give me one second. <clears throat> exactly. Let's see. Yeah, Deuteronomy 33. We can go to the book of Devarim, 33, and we're going to start at verse 26 to 28. So Devarim, Deuteronomy, chapter 33, 26 through 28, and it reads, Unlike unto the El of Yasharon, who rides upon the heaven in your help, and in his excellency on the sky, 
the eternal Elohim is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms and he shall thrust out the enemy from before you and shall destroy them and shall say destroy them. Israel then shall dwell safely in safety alone. The fountain of Yaakov shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heaven shall drop down dew. Happy are you, O Yisrael, who is like unto you, O people saved by Yahuwah, the shield of your help, who is the sword of your excellency, and your enemies shall be found liars unto you, and you shall tread upon their high places. Hallelujah. Okay. <clears throat> so the word there in verse 27 for refuge is me'onah. It's me'onah, which I thought was a very, very interesting. I thought that was a very interesting word. Right. Not on its meaning by itself, but on the roots meaning, right? So the word meona. Dang, excuse me. The word meona. <clears throat> means dwelling, habitation, or refuge, like a den or a lair. Okay? And the root of that, when you go down, because that's the feminine version, when you go down to the root, is Ona. So let's go to the book of Shemot, commonly called Exodus. Chapter 21. Chapter 21, verse 1. And it reads, And if a man sell his daughter to be a maid servant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. If she please not her master, who have betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed to sell her into a strange nation. He shall have no power, seeing he have dealt deceitfully with her. And if he have betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall not diminish. Uh, what does that have to do? <clears throat> does anybody see anything that has to do with the refuge? The word, the uh, word that uh, you would see is ona, which is in verse 10, where it says duty of marriage. So the root <clears throat> of refuge this particular word, meona, the root is ona, which means conjugal rights, conjugal rights, or cohabitation. So what does cohabitation or conjugal rights have to do with a refuge? Oh, no, okay, no sweat. Uh, shalom, shalom, yourself. I um, mean, shalomo, and then um, Aki, Adon, yourself. Hey, shalom, shalom. Um, just simply speaking, uh, dwelling would be refuge from the elements. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And it would be. Uh, Yosef? Okay, okay. Shalom, shalom. Can you hear me good more? Absolutely, you don't. Okay. I'll also have my uh, uh, shalom on to say, uh, in using these two references, you see kind of the refuge as almost our Elohim will be that, that ish for us, that husband for us, <clears throat> where that husband would kind of establish that that um that refuge for the isha the female the, the wife so you you uh, using this example right here would give the example that if we're supposed to be cohabitating with elohim it's supposed to be almost like an image of marriage which he would be our refuge if we are married to him in a sense and i guess mm. Okay, absolutely. Um, 
<clears throat> Let's go somewhere real quick. <clears throat> Walk with me, please. Uh, can we go to the book of Michelet, commonly called Proverbs chapter 31? I'll give y'all a second to get there. Proverbs chapter 31. Um, anybody came up? Oh, Proverbs 31, verse 11. <clears throat> Proverbs 31, verse 11. Can somebody read that for me? Just so I know y'all not sleep on me. Eleven and twelve for Vakusha. <clears throat> okay, and I got it. Okay, so that, okay. Our Prince and Most High. Uh, this is Proverbs 31. Uh -huh. Verses 11 and 12. Yes, sir. The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. Uh -huh. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Mm. Hallelujah. Let's talk about the virtuous woman, right? <clears throat> so, um, there's a there's a term <clears throat> that uh, is used in the street or or uh, in the secular world, which has to do with uh, conjugal activity. But it's when you do it with other people. And they say, you should not do this as you are laying down in the bed. What is that? Anybody know? You shouldn't do this, you know, while you're laying down, you know, after y'all did what, what grown folks do. You should not do this if, if they are not your husband or wife. Okay. You should not pillow talk. Oh, sorry, Johanna. I already said. Can't, I can't. I was gonna say something else, but uh, I was gonna say fornicate, but pillow oh, talk nah. is nothing. No, nah. you already even fornicated. But after you fornicate, you know, like when y'all still laying in bed and stuff like that, men they say that you should not pillow talk. You shouldn't just be telling your girl or women, you shouldn't just be telling that dude everything and pouring out your feelings and all of that. Why? Why? Why should you not pillow talk with somebody who is not your Ish or Isha? Or some, you know, somebody who you are seriously with? Aki. Oh, Kang, uh, you don't want your business in the streets. Kang, absolutely. Number one rule. You know, pillow talk is you want... You're not there for the after... <laughs> for the after stuff. You're just there for one reason. But when we come into this walk, right? One, when you're dealing with the creator, but also in relationships, in marriages, you should be comfortable with the person that you're with to the point where you become vulnerable. When you pillow talk, you become vulnerable. So if, if that person that you are with, if they are your refuge, right? Or your meona, if they are that for you, then you can be vulnerable with them and you know that you are safe, which is why we go to Proverbs and it says at the heart of her man, safely trust in her. That word trust is patat, which is something that we're going to talk about a little later as far as trust and refuge. But his heart trusts in her because she good. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So she's not going to go <clears throat> and take what you said and put it on the streets. That's what a refuge is. Somebody that you can confide in. 
That's what the creator is supposed to be. Do you front while you pray to your creator? Or do you confide in him what you really are feeling, how you really are feeling? When you look in the book of Genesis, <clears throat> when um, Eleazar was coming back with Rebecca and they saw Aaron, um, Isaac in the field and it said that he was complaining. It said that he was praying or meditating, but the, the word when you look under it is to complain. He was confiding in the creator. And as he was confiding in his refuge, then one that'll give him comfort came. Which is also what? What the creator does or what the Ish or Isha does for one who is uh, who needs to be consoled. So I thought that this was very, very interesting that the word for refuge has to do with conjugal rights. It's somebody that you stay with. Somebody that you lie with. Which means, of course, not everybody is going to be your refuge. There's only one person who should be this type. Because we're not going to get into no other conversation. There's only one person who should be this type of refuge for you. All right. Can we go to... <clears throat> I want to go to the to the second type of refuge. Let's go to uh Tehillim or Psalms chapter 59. Psalms chapter 59, and we're gonna go 16 to 17. And it reads, but I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing, for Elohim is my defense and the Elohim of my mercy. Hallelujah. So in this particular, uh, in these verses, right, we have two. Two words, one that we went over um, for those who uh, studied with us last Shabbat. One we went over then, or the only word that we went over then is also in this. But the word that I came to touch on was manos or ma'anos, which means flight, refuge, or place of escape. So he said on you are my defense and my refuge in the day of trouble. So in the day of trouble, this is where I run to. The word ma'anos is from uh, <clears throat> the word noose, okay, which means to flee or escape. So usually when you have uh, the mem prefix, it means from a verb. So from doing this, this is what it is. So from fleeing, you go to a place of escape. You go to your refuge. So where do you flee to? When things get hard, is it automatically something carnal that you go to? Not when you're laying down with your, with your Isha Isha, not, not that type of refuge, but even when she or he is getting on your nerves, where do you go? Is it to the creator? Or is it to a bottle of strong drink, yayin? Exactly, what, where do you go when everything around you, you need to escape for a second? The other word there that we went over was Miss God or Miss Gab, which is a high place, right? So it's speaking of a place that is um, in a inaccessible to other people it's just a place where you go so he said for thou has been my defense right a place that's inaccessible to everybody else that's your place of defense and my refuge in the day of trouble unto thee O my strength what i sing for elohim is my defense once again 
that high place or the place where you go that nothing outside can go in and touch you. Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 22. 1 Samuel chapter 22. So these are all these are all things that as we're going through these different words of refuge and these different um, aspects of what a refuge truly is, right? Because in Hebrew, it could just be refuge, one word like it is in English. But the most high gives you a watch the most high gives you a ain't nobody in this waiting room. You not know. Cain hmm. is a place that only you and the create and the creator can dwell. Cain, that's a place that you make, right? That the creator meets you there. Like my Isha used to go to um the beach and she would have this tree and she would climb into the tree. And that's where the creator would talk to her. Do you have a place that you go? Is it to the beach? No, my sisters, you cannot go to the mall and shop. That is not a refuge. That's a distraction. But anyway, okay. First Shimmy Well, chapter 22. It reads, now we therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And everyone that was in distress, everyone that was in debt, everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400. And now we went thence to Mizpah of Moab. And he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what Elohim will do for me. I don't think this is it. Hold on. Slackly. Let me see. Hold on, I'm trying to make sure this is it. First Samuel. Yeah, it should be this. Samuel 22. Slackly, I'm just trying to make sure this is correct. Mm -mm. All right, give me a second. Slackly. Oh, where is it? Hmm. Give me one second, sorry. Let's put that aside. Second Samuel. I'm sorry. I was wondering what was going on. It's Second Samuel, chapter twenty-two. Okay. Okay. So I All right. Second Samuel chapter 22, starting at verse 1. And it reads, And Dawid spake unto Yahuwah the words of this song in the day that Yah had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Shaul. And he said, Yahuwah is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the Elohim of my rock, and him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on Yahuwah who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Hallelujah. So verse three, right? Ver this, this, this entire passage is very, um, very great when it comes to 
the aspect of a refuge. Because in verse three, you have three different perspectives or three different areas of this one refuge, right? So he said, Elohim of my rock, and him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. So he's saying, in him, in him I am inaccessible and my refuge. So the place that I run to. And up top where it says, in him will I trust. That word there is the next one, which is kasa, which means to seek refuge, to put trust in, confide in, or hope in. So remember when we were talking about meona, and that the aspect is conjugal rights, or cohabitation is the one that you sleep with, or the one that you lay with is the one that you confide in. The one that you trust in. That's the, that's exactly what that we, the king is saying here about the creator. He is the one that I put my trust in. So you're only going to seek refuge in a place that you trust is safe. You're only going to go to a place that you know that you'll be protected from everything else, even a high tower. That's where you flee to. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. What? No, I want to touch on um, Kasa and, and then we'll go to Deuteronomy 32. Um, so Makasa. So remember when you put the mem in front of it, this is this is what you get. You get a noun. So the word kasa is the verb. When you put the mem in front of it, it's makasa. Let's go to Tehalim or Psalms chapter 46. And makasa means refuge or shelter. So from trusting, that's where you're going to get your shelter. So Psalms 46. Just a couple of verses on that. And then I want to um, ask a question. So Psalm 46, one to the chief musician for the sons of Korah, a son upon Alama, El is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Hmm. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of Elohim, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. So through all of that, through everything that's going on around them, their shelter or their refuge is in the creator. That's where they put their trust in. When everything else seems to be falling apart around you. Your relationships are a little shaky. Your job seems a little shaky. Everything around you seems shaky and un, uncertain. In the midst of that uncertainty, if the creator is your refuge or your shelter because you put trust in him, then you will eventually have peace. Because that's who you trust in. Tehillim or Psalms 62. Seven. I want to read it. Hmm. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start from the top, verse one. So I click. So the chief musician to Jedutong, Jedutong, a psalm of Dawid, truly my soul waiteth upon Elohim. From him cometh my salvation. Yeah. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall, shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. The only consult to cast him down, they only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies, they bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Hmm. My soul, wait thou only upon Elohim, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, I shall not be moved. And Elohim is my salvation and my esteem. 
the rock of my strength and my refuge is in Elohim. Trust in him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. Elohim is a refuge for us all. Selah. So you see that Makase, right? And the Miss God. So it said, He is my defense. Once again, my defense. And he is my refuge. I put trust in him. Now, my question to you all is, okay, so it, the aspect of refuge and trust, based on what we've read so far, is there a negative connotation or a negative side to a refuge? Can having a refuge or a place of refuge be negative? Thanks, Lomo. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Could it be a place where you're enabled, a place where you have a lack of accountability so you don't grow? Ooh. Okay, we're going to touch on that in just a second. Hallelujah. Shashamal. So can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a little familiar with this uh, this chapter. Uh, and to answer the question, I would say it depends on what you have reference. I mean, refuge, refuge in, uh, because of course, if you have refuge in the Most High, you know you're good. But you know, I think you know many people, especially in this generation, they have refuge in, um, you know, power, you know, money, you know, oppression. Um, so if you have refuge in that, those things should be, you know, gone tomorrow. So if your refuge is in, you know, things that are materialistic or things, you know, such as oppression, you know, it's not, it's not a good look, you know. How are you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So let's go. Um, and, and both of those are great answers. And right now we are going to get into the negative side of it. So let's go to Deuteronomy, Deborah chapter 32. And we're going to start at verse 35. Deuteronomy chapter 32, starting at verse 35. And it reads, To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. For Yahuwah shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. When he seeth that their power is gone and that there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drink the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Hallelujah. Verse 37, he said, where are their gods, their rock, in whom they trusted? Remember that your God is whoever you believe has the power. That means that that's going to be the one in whom you trust in. That's why they put their trust in those false idols. Because that's who they thought had the power. As Shashamar said, well, if your refuge is in money, guess what? Money is your L. You think that money has the power to solve all your issues. If your husband or your wife, if you think that they can solve all your issues, they, they are the ones that you put trust in above all else, that is your idol. That's your L. That's your God. If you think that you, yourself, can solve all your issues. You put the trust in you to make sure that everything goes according to your plan. You are your own idol. You have now become your own God. 
So as the most I said, well, since you got, save yourself. Yourself. What's wrong, my key? Dang, Ken, I love the points you're bringing out first and foremost. <laughs> so I had to <clears throat> look at the etymology of the word there just to edify myself. And one thing I find interesting is that that word there for uh, to take refuge, which is a uh, kasa, mm -hmm. which is interesting because it says to seek refuge. But you clearly, you, for me, I see a clearly a clear difference between the difference in refuge and a false idol. Where in this, you're trying to seek refuge. It's almost like a false illusion of trying to seek refuge in something that can't give you refuge. Whereas you see, if you seek refuge in the, in the creator, it's affirmed, it's guaranteed in a sense when you mm -hmm. seek the creator. But if you're seeking that something that's false, it's giving that, that false image of something that's not there, it's an illusion. Okay. Which is why you would be, you're gonna be heartbroken once it does fail. Because that's where you put your trust at. If you didn't put your trust in it and it don't go right, it's like, dang. All right, well, whatever else you got for me, Most High, because that's who you put your trust in. That's your power. So wherever you move me, that's where I'm supposed to be because you put me there. Let's go to the book of Yeshia or Isaiah. Chapter 28. And we're going to start at verse 15. Yeshiyahu, commonly called Isaiah, chapter 28, starting at verse 15. Hallelujah. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell. Are we at agreement when the overflowing scourge or scourge shall pass through? It shall not come un un unto us, but we have made lies our refuge. And our under falsehood have we hid ourselves. We have made lies our makase, our refuge, which comes from the root kasa. Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah, or Adonai, Yah, behold, I lay in Zion for a, found, a foundation of stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment I also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet, and the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the, the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand when the overflowing scour scourge, yeah, scourge, scourge uh, shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. So the Most High is saying that you hid or made your refuge in falsehood and lies. So when the truth comes, that's going to blow away what you had your trust in. Because it was something other than him. And it happens in our lives periodically, hopefully, and not frequently where we have lost track or lost sight of where our power is, who our trust should be in. And the Most High has to reveal to you that you kind of off and that I am still the power. Hey. Hmm. So, so far we've seen that the Most High is our refuge due to the fact that we can confide in him, that we can flee to him, that when we get to him, he makes us inaccessible to anybody else and places us at a height to where nothing can get to us. He is our defense. And because we know that we, put, we have put trust in him, because we have seen him do this time in and time out, not only for our ancestors, but in our own lives. So he has become our refuge and our shelter. I have a question. Um, when you hear the word refuge, 
in scriptures or Torah, what comes up? Or what comes to mind when you hear the word refuge in Torah? I'm wrong. Slow my key. Uh, I was going to say shelter. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm looking for something. It is shelter. So for all you have, who have read Torah, you know, time in and time out, um, there's a place where if you accidentally kill somebody, that's all I'm going to say. Elder Lucifer, slow, slow, as I quit. Uh, I, I would think uh, the wilderness was a refuge. Um, yes, the wilderness definitely was a refuge. Um, I think Shalomo know what I'm talking about, though. Shalomo. Hey, Adon, you're talking about one of the six cities of refuge that someone who committed manslaughter would have been fleeing to until the uh, high priest was arriving at Wedgwood. Okay, we're talking about the cities of refuge. Hmm. So as Adon said, the cities of refuge, right? <clears throat> Let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 35, real quick, just to give backdrop. So verses one through five. So we go with a uh, the midbar commonly called Numbers chapter thirty-five to read about these cities of refuge. So we're gonna go verse six and seven. So Numbers thirty-five, six and seven. And it said, and among the cities which ye shall give unto the Le Levites, there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee there. And to them ye shall add forty and two cities. So all the cities which you shall give to the Lewi Lewi in shall be forty eight cities. Them shall you give with their suburbs. Hmm. So it's talking about Deuteronomy nineteen five. Okay, we can go there too. A little sweat. Deuteronomy nineteen to five, and it reads. As when a man go up into the wood with his neighbor to hew wood in his hand, fetch of a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree and the head slippeth from the hell and lighteth upon his neighbor that he die. He shall flee unto one of those cities and live. Lest the avenger of blood pursue the slayer while his heart is hot and overtake him because the way is long and slay him. Whereas he was not worthy of death inasmuch he hated him not in times past. So this is a place where you would go to in order to be safe from the avenger of blood. You didn't mean to kill the man, but you killed the man, but you need to go to one of these cities so you don't get killed. Is that a good thing? Yes, in a sense, right? Shashamar? Yeah, I was going to answer the question. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that's a good thing. But it kind of re reminded me of a situation that happened when I was in high school. Um, so basically, you know, one of, one of our uh, teammates, he got in trouble in class, you know, not doing his work, not listening. So, you know, the coach made everybody run but him. And when we were done running, he told him to get dressed first. After he got dressed, he told us to go to the locker room. <laughs> so, yeah, you <laughs> Y'all's gonna try to jump him in, jump him in the locker room, Mikey. Um, that's crazy. But yeah, so this is where you would go, right? So is it a good thing? Yes, to a certain extent, it's a good thing. I believe Shalomo said earlier that refuge is good unless it hinders you. So this place of refuge was great in the sense of it kept you alive, but you couldn't leave the city. You could not leave the city of refuge. 
And it's hilarious. Well, it's funny to me, right? Maybe funny to y'all. It's funny to me that the root of the word miklot, right? Because that's the word for city of refuge. That word refuge is miklot. It's funny to me that the root word kalat means to be stunted, to be handicapped, to be deformed. Now, we spoke about refuge as far as flee. So why couldn't the Most High say a place of uh, ma'anos, a place of refuge, a place to flight, a place to escape? That would be perfect right there. You don't need no other word for that. It, that's a place of escape, literally. But why is he saying that that's a place of kalat, mekalat? Why are you handicapped? Because you can't move. It, it takes something away from you. And that's exactly what that's exactly what certain refuges that you may have do to you. For example, I'm not gonna pick on people, but people who believe in Yahusha or Christians who believe in Jesus. In a sense, if you don't have the, the proper understanding, that handicaps you. Although to you, it's a refuge. So people will say, well, you know, Jesus did it all for me. I can do all things to him and I ain't got to do nothing. That's, you are putting yourself, you are trusting in, in, in reality, a an idol, right? You have just made an idol and now you have placed your trust on it. And now you have handicapped yourself by not understanding that you have work to do. You ever see somebody who, who's, a, um, who's spoiled? So every time something goes on in their life, they go running back to mommy and daddy. Every time they're in a the bind, they go running back to mommy and dad. And mommy and daddy bail them out every time. To, the, to him or to her, that's a refuge. But in reality, they're handicapping or stunting the growth of their child. Because when they're gone, they will never know how to get it or to fix it or to rectify or to grow and move on themselves. So you have just been handicapped. So when I read that, I was like, hey, that's crazy. So in a sense, you still get punished for taking that life because a part of you is now deformed. A part of you is now handicapped. Even if you bring your family, now you and your family can't leave a city. Imagine whatever city that you live in, you cannot leave it. You cannot leave the city that you're in. You can't go see your family outside of it. Everybody got to come to you. And you know some of our families ain't coming nowhere to see us. So you you are stuck. Shalom, shalom, my king. Now, Kim, yeah. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, family. How we doing? I told me all about glad to see you in your voice. Hey, king, king. Likewise, likewise. Just wanted to comment on that real quick. Um, <clears throat> chime in on which was building on, and um, that's mad. That's how you know that the creator is the creator, and that's how you know that he lives in the past, present, and future. That's how you know that his words live through time, because when you think about it, that's a level. When you take a life by mistake, and when you make a mistake, it's a lot of times because of like negligence or something that you missed or something that you didn't really feed on one percent. You didn't follow that protocol one to percent that, you know, because y'all got protocols for everything, not just Torah. You know, when you get something, when you get a tool, when you get whatever you get, y'all got directions with it. So everything got, got a protocol to it. So when you follow that protocol, everything's going to be good. But when you don't follow protocol and the life get taken, y'all know it was an accident. I know it was an accident, but you was negligent. So now you got to flee. 
you got to stay in the city until the priest and pa pass away and the priest could be mad young. Okay. <laughs> could be mad young and now you in the city for 40 y'all cover all bases man you got that's that's a level cuz nowadays bringing it to times of now when you take when cops and you know in, in anybody in, in in general take a life by mistake is nowhere for them to flee so now you got to like, y'all got to do it how y'all do it. Y'all got to take your life. I mean, it's places you can flee, I'm pretty sure, because y'all got all areas covered. But wherever you flee to, it's going to be real because you still got to deal with that. So y'all right. covers all bases, man. I feel that's real. That's real that you brought that out. Hallelujah. Yeah, you, you can't. It, <laughs> that was a key part. Like, what if the high priest just got anointed? Now, you're serving a life sentence inside of a city. But it's a refuge. That's the same thing with us. The only, the, the only reason, way that we can't be handicapped is if our refuge is a creator. That's the only way. But the only way that you're going to flee to him is if you trusted him. And the only way that we'll know that you trusted him is if you confide in him. If you cohabitate with him. You pillow talk with your creator. That's the difference. So that's just war on the topic or the aspect of refuge. Um, I'm gonna open the floor. Just if anybody have any comments, questions, or concerns, we definitely could, you know, continue to build on it. Um, hallelujah. So I'll open the floor. Deborah, come on. No, you're on mute. No, you're on you hear mute. me? I can now. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, so um, it reminds me of the story of Moshe. You know, um. Before he, uh, but when he left, he left because he had a relationship with the Most High. I would say that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't revealed to him the extent of his relationship, but he had faith. And he knew he had to leave. So his refuge was not in Mitzrayim anymore. So when he left, that's why the Most High, you know, gave him a little bit, you know, for him to, to see what he was made of. Then he revealed his himself to him when he, you know, he fully brought, brought him into the wilderness, well, his wilderness. And um, he gave him the task, or I would say the chore, of um, bringing his people out of, going back and bringing his people out of Mitzrayim when he came to his, um, his full self, his higher self. And to help them do the same. Okay. Yes, hallelujah. Um, Yosef? Can and don't can you hear me pretty well? Okay. Damn, first and foremost, hallelujah for uh, continuing in this vein. <laughs> uh, I, I praise the most high for allowing us to 
understand the differences between um, what refuge look like, what um, what different types of refuge that we we ourselves that we make as refuge for ourselves, and kind of going back to what I said earlier, you know, those things can be definitely folly, and we have that false illusion on these things that have absolutely no protection for us. I remember my don, I think it was last week, we talked about um, the armor of Elohim. So that right there is where you're gonna, where you're gonna, where, uh, you're gonna find your refuge in that, putting on that whole armor of Elohim and shield you from those things that are always trying to attack you, always trying to uh, vindicate you and judge you in any matter or shape or form. But when you have that hinge of protection that is the creator also in your brother. Um, uh, he's not on here right now, but my Akazar brought that out too. Also in finding refuge in your brother, you know, that's where you actually can find that refuge, find that protection. Even having that refuge and uh, sounding a little weird, but having that pillow talk with your brother, if you need to get something off your chest, get something that's weighing you down, that's weighty in your heart, going and confining in your brother. In a sense, you're confining to creator as well, you know. So, Toda for bringing that out and uh, tying that up and continuing that vein. I uh, pray that we all seek refuge in the creator in all matters that are troubling us, uh, just, as, just as far as communing with our creator. So, I yield the floor in this one. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Uh, Shashamar. Okay, you know, a uh, total blessing, you know, um, definitely. I learned a lot, uh, you know, praise the most high for allowing you to bring the lesson also, and you know, everyone else to bring out their points. Uh, you know, the whole concept, you know, ref refuge from the most high is something I've been thinking about recently. Cause you know, there's certain situations, you know, you know, that I come across, you know, I can find a quick solution, but you know, uh, you know, then other times I come across situations where, you know, I don't have a solution, you know, so uh, the way I see it is better, you know, if I, you know, train my mind, train my heart to already have, you know, a stable relationship with the creator where I can trust in him. So when certain situations do happen to me, um, it's not, it's really nothing new to me, you know, when things, you know, come my way that is completely out of my control, you know, so praise most high, you know, for the wisdom. Yeah, I yield. Oh, yeah. So I okay. Thank you for that share. Uh, yeah, um, I'm going to read a scripture from Proverbs as well, too. Uh, it's in, I think it's in Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. And it reads, trust in El Yahuwah with all your heart and lean not on, lean not onto your own understanding. In all your, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And then I'm going to read another Proverbs 23, uh, 12. It also reads, apply your heart unto instruction and your ears to the words of knowledge. So to so kind of like uh, tie it up with uh, what Koti said earlier uh, about Moses, he was, in a, he was able to take instructions and to heed to the words. And that's why uh, yeah, I was uh, able to uh, reveal the the greater him that he didn't know he was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Mikimia Aki. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to just um bring up real quick. Um, um my sister brought out. Um, when y'all took that um, Egyptian life, it's, it's real how he had to, he, he fled and um, and he went, and, you know, he got the word from the creator, but it showed you how Yah never breaks his own commandments because that was his city as refuge. And then when he came back, y'all told him the man that was seeking his life was gone. Like, so that was like his pop, his, you know, his city of refuge and his, it's just real how God covers all bases when you think about it. And it just came to me just now when she brought that out. I was like, yeah, y'all just covered all bases, man. I 
Like I said, past, present, and future. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. You see a lot of uh, the commands that we got on Sinai and our forefathers and, 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 and foremothers lives. Uh, so yeah, that was definitely a, um, a precursor to the city of refuge. But with, with this thought or this conversation, it's just more of um, how do you know what you have made your refuge? And hopefully um, with some of the things that we brought out, you have seen who or what you have made your refuge and, and is it the creator? And if it's not the creator, okay, well then how do you begin to make him your refuge? How do you begin to trust in him? How do you begin to confide in him? How do you begin to um, run to him in times of trouble? Our problem in the wilderness was that we began, we only looked toward Moshe and we never cried out to the creator, which is what got us Moshe in the first place. We forgot who our power was. So don't cry to man, even if it's a man of Yah. You cry to Yah, and then he will tell the man what is necessary. And even, right, even when I, um, I messed up and um, went to 1 Samuel instead of 2 Samuel 22, and you look at Dawid in the cave of uh, Adullam, and you see all of those who had problems, they went to figure out what the man of Yah was doing. Right? So they, they joined themselves to him, seeking refuge from their problems, so on and so forth. And the, But the whole time, he was still pointing them to the creator. That's exactly what we ought to be doing. How do we know this? Because he wrote psalms in the cave of Adullam. He wrote psalms the whole time he was being chased by Shaul. So they heard and saw him crying out to his creator, being an example of what it looks like, that even in what seems like to be a dark situation, to still cry out to the one that you know has the power. So um, with that being said, uh, if there aren't any more comments, questions, um, then we can go ahead and pray out again. Um, so, if not, okay, cool. Um, this weekend, for those who are in VA, uh, Ikea Zar Yahoo had his uh, Earth Strong or Yom Hula Debt this past um, 